got somebody back here. But Nice to see you. Are we ready? Okay. okay. All right. Good evening, everybody. And welcome to Bellevue Reformed Church's Christmas Eve service. Uh, I bring you some uh, sad news in that uh, uh, Jennifer Click's father has uh, gone into hospice, and uh, she's the one that organized this evening, and she's, she, uh, he went in today, so she went down to Virginia uh, to be with him as he makes this, this passage. So remember Jennifer Click in uh, your prayers. Um, At the benediction, I'm going to announce how we're going to do the candle lighting service. You all got your candles? Okay, very good. Now, in my travels about welcoming you folks, it's good to see all of you, I asked some of the children, how long would you like for me to speak? <laughs> yeah, they did not say an hour. No, they did not say that. Shucks, I'm ready for an hour. Uh, but... Uh, they said, keep it short. So um, we'll see what we can do about that. Are we ready to go? Then we shall go. Pardon me? A reading from Isaiah. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. Light four candles, see them glow brightly, so that all may know how Jesus shows the way, making our darkness bright as God's day. May light and love shine brightly in our hearts, spreading love, faith, joy, and peace to those around us. I see. Please join in singing, O Come All Ye Faithful. Oh, come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come Oh, 
happy morning, Jesus, to Thee be all glory given. Word of the Father, now in flesh appearing, oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the first chapter. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived by in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took Mary home as his wife. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. How could it be, this baby in my arms, sleeping now so peacefully, the Son of God, the angel said, how could it be? Lord, I know. He's not my own, not of my flesh, not of my bones, still fatherland, this baby be the son of my love. Father, show me where I fit into this plan of yours. How can a man be father to the Son of God? Lord, for all my life I've been a simple carpenter. How can I raise a king? How can I raise a king? He looks so small, his face and hands so fair. And when he cries, the sun just seems to disappear. And when he laughs, it shines again. How could it be? Father, show me where I fit into this plan of yours. How can a man be father? 
to the Son of God. Lord, for all my life I've been a simple carpenter. How can I raise a king? How can I raise a king? How could it be this baby in my arms? Sleeping now so peacefully, the Son of God, the angel said, how could it be? How could it be? A reading from Luke 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. When they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. This is a beautiful hymn. It's a prayer. It was written, the first two verses, about 1850. It was written for children to sing in a Christmas passage. And then the third verse was written in about 1895 or so to complete the message of this hymn. This is about, I think, one of the most important hymns you will hear. 
and one of the most important messages that you must respond to. And by not responding, you are responding. So it'll call us to pay attention to what's being said in this hymn and to think deeply within our hearts as to whether this is just some nice little ditty that we sing that makes us feel good or it's more of an expression of something that goes on deep within us, deep inside, that makes our life different. music is most soothing and comforting. It speaks to the child within us all. And in this child that is within us all, we stand in awe of a birth of God in the form of an infant. And in the second verse, we respond to that and we say we love you in Jesus. In the second verse, it says that. How we love him. In the third verse, in this hymn, this prayerful hymn, we sing, be near me, Lord Jesus. That's the request. And he is. He responds. He is near each and every one of us. The hymn goes on and asks another. I ask thee to stay close by me forever. And God responds. He does. He does not leave us. He does not abandon us no matter what. He is our constant companion. Another request that is made is, love me, I pray. And he does. And he does. He loves us so much that he has given his only son that if we only believe this and take it in, and allowed to have its effect on us, it demonstrates so beyond words how much he loves us and cares for us. And then another request in this hymn, in the third verse, it says, fit us for heaven, he has, to live with thee there, and we will. Good news. We will. By Jesus' life and resurrection, he answers all of our prayers and he answers all of the requests that are made in this very lovely, beautiful, soothing, comforting hymn that was written for children for Christmas plays. God, through Jesus, has responded. Now, here it is. Here it is. We need to respond to God. He has responded to us. We've heard it in this wonderful hymn. Now, we need to respond to God. And we need to take this baby who is in a manger and place this baby and all that it means into the manger that is our hearts. And that's what we need to do. No easy task. We take the baby from the manger and place the baby within our hearts, the manger of our hearts. Ezekiel said it very nicely in the Old Testament. He said, I will give you a new heart. It's 
speaking of God. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. Dear friends, let us choose this day and this moment to decide maybe for the first time or maybe just to renew our dedication of allowing God to make our hearts new, new, and to have that spirit of God living, not in a manger, a wooden manger, in a song, but in the manger of our hearts. And point of fact, we are born again. May this Christmas indeed be for you that merry Christmas that God so wants it to be. Amen. Amen. A reading from Luke 2, verses 8 through 20. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that had they had heard and seen, which was just as they had been told. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing on the plain, and the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous train.
After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard that he, he, this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. If I could have all the children come up. right on the floor. You can see the book. Can I sit right over here? Perfect. And one more. Can I sit up here? Can you sit on the floor here? Merry Christmas, everyone. Thank you. We've all heard the story of the three wise men who brought their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh to baby Jesus. But what about the camels who carried them? Here is the story of Humphrey, the camel, and his long, cold journey to Bethlehem. This is called Humphrey's First Christmas, written and illustrated by Carol Taird. Beloved, most beauteous and exalted king of all, should be my name. Instead, they call me Humphrey. This I could bear if the worst thing of all had not happened. My dearest possession, my glorious carpet blanket, had been lost along the trail now I am never warm, and I suffer terribly. That is why I have set into motion a plan to replace my greatest of all treasures. I carefully nudge my nose inside the caravan master's tent. This is followed closely by the chattering of my teeth, thereby letting the master know that I am most enormously cold. Success! He has not pushed me out, and I remain hopeful that my new blanket will soon be mine. Three, two, 
three rich caravans have joined us, and there has been talk of kings. Yet these kings bring me no joy, for they have tied three huge chests to my bare back. They are so heavy, I am sure each must be filled with rocks. Oh, he does not look happy. The other camels are wearing the finest of blankets. They are all comfortable and warm. Not one of them thinks about me, their cousin, in pain and misery. Because of the loss of my most precious carpet blanket, I cry out in sorrow. I weep. Today, I continue my plan to regain my treasured blanket. I add loud sniffling to the chattering of teeth and squeeze my entire body inside my master's tent. As I do so, out rolls my master, for the tent is exactly camel size. It is as I planned. As the master chases me away, he tosses me a new blanket. I have success. Once more, I am covered with splendor and comfort. I am filled with delight. If it were not for the heavy chest I am forced to carry, I would be almost happy. We have followed one star for many long nights. Now our caravan enters the town of Bethlehem. Its streets and inns are crowded with travelers. My master gives no thought to my tired feet and rumbling belly, I am forced to move on. At last, we reach the end of our journey, but I am confused. There is no great palace, no rich oasis, no palms heavy with fruit. I see only a lowly stable with a family inside. The three kings rejoice and rush forward to bow before the young woman who cradles a baby. Finally, the chests are taken from my back and placed before this tiny child. As each box is opened, I see no stones, only gold, frankincense, and myrrh. In this land, I have walked past many children, but never before have I felt the need to walk toward one. Now I kneel before this baby, shivering in a manger. Watching him gladdens me more than sweet water, fresh hay, or even my wondrous new blanket. I look into the baby's eyes, and I am overwhelmed by love. I pull the treasure from my back and lay my gift carefully upon this child. He smiles, and my nose and whiskers tingle with joy. I am happy to my toes, and even without my blanket, I feel warm. Beloved, most beauteous and exalted king of all should be his name. Instead, they call him Jesus. Well, I wanted you to hear the story because I see Humphrey right there. And you know what? Humphrey realized that Jesus was the one that he wanted to go towards. He wanted even his most prized possession to be Jesus's. And so tomorrow, I know that some of you will get some cool toys, maybe a new book, but I want you to think about the one that Christmas is really about. It's about Jesus. Thank you for listening. You can go back to your seats now. of Orient
star bearing gifts we traverse afar field and fountain more and mountain following yonder star oh star of wonder star of night star with royal beauty bright westward leading still proceeding guide us to thy perfect light born a king on bethlehem's plain gold i bring to crown him again King forever, see, sing never over us all to reign. Oh, star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading still proceed. Guide us to thy perfect light. Frankincense to offer have I. Incense owns a deity nigh. Prayer and praising, all men raising, worship him, God, on high. Oh. Star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect love. may be seated. Now, dear friends, as you go forth back into your homes, back into your places, may you go forth in that peace that comes from knowing God intimately. You've heard the story of God's gracious love yet again. May it bring you great joy and comfort. Go in peace, that peace that comes from knowing God intimately. Go in peace. Now we're going to have a candle lighting uh, service in which all of you have your candles and uh, there will be people who will be going down the aisle lighting your candle and if you would turn and light the candle of the person next to you with great care and we'll be singing together Silent Night as you do this and then upon the completion of Silent Night please extinguish your candles and uh, as you exit there will be a place for you to place your candles there will be a box so for you to place your candles in any questions okay candle lighters where art thou
Thank you. Blessings. Yeah, I... 